Hello quilting friends, my name is Pam Haltren Klein. Welcome to my sewing table. Today I would like to look at the quilt block called an attic window. We can easily use our easy angle to create extended half square triangles which will make the pane for the window of any attic window block. I am excited to show you how to do this. Let's head to the cutting table. So today we're going to do an attic window and create a fun little I spy quilt. When I look at my individual block for this here at the cutting table, I do want to notice that this block is going to be five and a half inches. Okay, it's a five and a half inch square as you can see right there. Of course, finished, that means it will be five inch. All right, so if we know this block right now is five and a half inches, I also notice that I'm using the light fabric at the bottom of my window, and I'm using the darker fabric off to the left of my window. Those two things are pretty important. Five and a half inches and light on the bottom, dark over here to the left. Now we're ready to cut our attic window. I'm going to use two and a half inch strips again because it works out really well and if you've got a jelly roll you can put them together pretty quickly. What I remember from my little block is that my fabric to the left was the darker fabric. When I'm going to be cutting with my easy angle then I want my left fabric to be face up on my cutting mat and I want my bottom fabric to be right sides together, all right, right on top of the left fabric, just like that, okay? Now, let's push that to the side a little bit, and here's where we're going to trim off that edge, and often I have used my easy angle just as a straight edge also, works pretty nicely for that. So we'll cut off so we have a nice clean edge to get started. And as we cut and get our clean edge like that, now we're ready for our first attic window cut, okay? So with our easy angle then, we are going to find that five and a half inch. Do you remember we said the finished block is gonna be five and a half inches? So with our strip and our easy angle, we find the spot that says five and a half inches. Okay, there's five and a half inches. Now I remember this strip is two and a half inches wide, so that's why we see two and a half there. That is exactly the right spot to make that cut. So I'm going to hold firm with my left hand and then cut directly like that. And I have my first attic window piece all set to go. Now, don't take them apart. Just like we did our easy angles, we're going to keep them together and take them right to the sewing machine just like that, all right? And just like we did with our regular easy angle, we can take this piece now and our easy angle, and all we're going to do is do that flip like a book. So we're gonna just turn bottom left corner becomes top right corner. We flipped it. We're going to carry it down here until again we see five and a half because we know that block needs to be five and a half so if i hold it at five and a half and i know i have this angle matching the fabric then i can cut right here and i have my second window ready to go to the sewing machine we keep doing that repeatedly until we have enough windows to make our quilt. Now that we're at the sewing machine, we're going to take each one of our attic window sets that we cut with our easy angle. We are not going to take them apart. We still have the left side and we have the bottom side together and we're ready to sew couple things to remember with anything with an easy angle always sew the point first so we're going to bring it so we can do point into the machine first all right and because an attic window does involve a y seam 
which sounds scary to some people, but I promise I will show you step by step and it isn't that difficult, especially with my easy angle. I'm always pleased with how they turn out. I am going to give myself a little hint because when we sew, we'll start point first and we'll go quarter inch as ac um, accurate as you can. And we need to do a stop early before we get all the way to that outside edge. So to know where to stop, I use a tool. In my case, I do use my easy angle, which has that qu um, quarter inch marked with a dashed line. I'm gonna put the dashed line on the edge of my fabric. Make sure you can see that. Okay, dashed line is right there on the edge of my fabric. And then I'm gonna use some kind of a fabric marking tool and just do a little stop sign right there. Stop right there, okay? Doesn't have to be big, just so you can see it, right? And then we'll take it over to the machine and I'm going to line it up with a quarter inch edge of my quarter inch foot and press it down, there we go. And sew from the point down until I get to that little spot that I marked as a stop sign. Right there, and I'm done. And there we go. We have the, if you wanna say the windowsill ready for our attic window. There's the left edge, there's the bottom edge, and then eventually what we're going to be able to do is to put in our little window. And in this case, for our I Spy quilt, we're going to use a little canoe in that block. And that's how you do it for an attic window. Let's go. All right, so we have our, let's call it our windowsill that we created by using our easy angle and what I refer to as an extended half square triangle. When we have that seam sewn and we open it up we can see exactly where our little window pane is going to need to fit in. Now, I usually lay mine out like this, and then I place my window pane in there, and then I look at this. And in this case, this little square is non-directional, so I could twist it anyway, so it's kind of nice. There, that one you don't need to worry about so much, but sometimes you come across one where you say, oh, no, no, this one needs to go in a certain direction. Our little loon definitely needs to be going, you know, going upward. Okay, so if that's the case, then that's why I lay it out like this so that I can take my loon and I'm gonna take my window pane block, I'm going to bring it over to my left windowsill, right sides together. This is going to be my seam coming straight down from that top edge and we're going to sew until we get to a quarter inch from the bottom. If you are more comfortable, I showed you a few seconds ago how to mark a little stop sign for yourself. You can do it. That's fine. Go ahead and mark it right there at the bottom uh, edge of your window pane. Then I always put in a couple pins so that nothing wiggles and moves i see those two edges are even at the top they're even here we're going to put a couple pins in so that it can't wiggle and we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from the top down and we're going to stop at the quarter inch spot so let me get my machine going here and away we go pin out of the way And stop. And then when we take that out, now we can see that our window pane is in place for the left edge. And now we're going to do the bottom. But let me show you the, the reminder kind of thing that I do. If we open the window and we shut the windowsill. Okay, did you see how I did that? Then we're ready for our next seam. So let's do that again. I want you to see how I did that, okay? After we just sewed the seam, then we 
open the window, right? We close the windowsill, all right? We give it a quarter turn, and there's our next place to set to sew our seam. When I do this, I can see this got kind of goofy, so I just kind of stick my finger in there and sort of fluff it out, and it all seems to lay in place just like I need it to. I'm going to make sure this outside edge matches perfectly. When I do a Y seam, I always, always, always sew from the outside down to the Y. Outside down to the Y. Every time, both seams. Outside down to the Y. And start each seam fresh. Don't try to just turn and go. Okay? And then, if we do that here, I'm going to set, I think I want another pin. I like it when stuff stays in place like that. Okay, I'm going to bring it to the machine. And I'm going to sew straight down again. I'm going to stop then a quarter inch from the end. And actually, I can see the other seam now. So that other seam kind of marked my stop sign. So then I can cut right there so it doesn't overlap. And then when I open it up, I should have my loon all set to go, just like that. Now I'm going to take you to the ironing board so I can show you how I iron it so it will lay flat and be ready for our quilt. Once we've finished sewing all of our attic windows, then we need to iron them so they stay nice and flat like our little loon here. So let's try another one of my uh, attic windows for my I Spy quilt. Here I have my sweet little husky. And when I think about how I'm gonna iron this, I know that I want the seams to make a pinwheel going around. So I'm gonna start with my window pane and I'm gonna push that bottom seam first towards the windowsill using my iron. So I'll push this seam toward the windowsill like that. Then my diagonal seam, if I'm gonna keep going around my pinwheel this way, that means that the diagonal seam needs to go to the left like that. So I'm going to give it a push that way, right there. And then if I'm gonna keep it going, I want it to come this way again, so I'm going to kind of grasp that seam and give it a push towards the left, or towards the right actually, because it's going around in the pinwheel, okay? So this one went down, this one went over, this one went across like that, and we can even do a second time around if we want to to make sure they all went around right like that. In fact, it's kind of fun to flip it over and check and see, did you actually get a pinwheel back there? Give it a little extra press. If you give it that little extra press, then when you go to uh, do your quilting, it'll be laying so nice and flat. There is a finished attic window. We used our easy angle and what I call an extended half square triangle to make a perfect little Y seam and an attic window that's, in this case, ready for an ice spy quilt. Today, we looked at the technique that we use to create attic window with our easy angle. We found out that we can do this extended half square triangle to create the window sill, which then allows us to make the whole wonderful little attic window. We might create an I Spy quilt. We might use a panel and add the attic window and really make it look like you're looking through grandma's attic window. All of these are possible with your easy angle. For now, I wish you all many hours of happy quilting the easy way.